Hello, everybody. This is Mesa Mehra Abaran from Ozone Engineering. I've been with Ozone for a year and a half, roughly. Before that, I've been with uh, electric car company Python, and before that, five years with Ford Motor Company. Uh, this YouTube short is uh, a turbo machinery seminar. This is the third one. And we'll mostly focus on compressors. Uh, a little brief introduction about us. We are Ozone Engineering. We have 17 years of successful operation in California a thousand plus happy clients. And we have a lot of expertise in multi-physics final element analysis or FEA, computational fluid dynamics or CFD, and also electromagnetics, including high and low frequency. And we have been the ANSYS channel partner of the year, even for uh, two years. Here's our territory. We have um, the headquarter in Sunnyvale. We are uh, having our office in Portland, Oregon, and also staff in Long Beach, California. Here is a list of software we sell. As you see in, in structures, we have mechanical, LS, Dyna, Encode, and also on Floyds, we have Fluent, CFX, FENSAP, Forte, Polyflow, and a lot more. On electromagnetics, we have Maxwell, HFSS, uh, MotoCAD, RM Expert, and on Semiconductor, we have also some uh, products. Uh, on material side, we have Granta. On embedded software side, we have different packages of uh, skate tool. And also on system level study, we have a tool called Twin Builder. And also Medini for uh, FEMA and fault tolerant uh, analysis. Uh, so as you see, we have a lot of tools and whatever industry you're located at, uh, give us a call. We can help you in choosing the right tool which fits your needs and make your product development process faster and more efficient. Uh, as you mentioned in previous uh, sessions, we went through the basic thermal machinery and we also had an example on a uh, fan. But in this session, we are going to focus on compressors. Uh, when you open uh, the CF uh, turbo tool, yeah, you see you have these four options and for design a compressor, of course, you select the compressors. And to do the conceptual design, you need uh, very minimal data such as mass flow, uh, total pressure ratio, and also the RPM. As you see here, uh, the mass flow is uh, quite reasonable, uh, but the RPM is way higher in uh, compressors. And also for a liquid, you can choose uh, what is going to be your fluid. Is it going to be air or something else? And based on the input data that you put, it can tell you if it's going to be a radial machine or an actual machine or something mixed in between. Uh, you got to follow some steps very similar uh, uh, to fan design that we went through, but this is for compressor. So we start with the main dimensions to get the best efficiency point. Then you do the original contours and then you uh, go to the blade properties to define blade number, shape, angle, type, and also you uh, tweak the blade mean lines to get the curve that you're interested in. After that, you can uh, manipulate the blade, uh, blade profiles, and finally, you define the blade leading and trailing edge. After completing all these steps, then you'll have a 3D CAD for your turbo device. Uh, the other tool, which is uh, the other part I would say, which is being used, especially in case of radial uh, compressors, is a volute. Uh, the design step for volute is a little simpler, uh, a little different too. First, you set it up uh, and define the inlet, and then you define the cross section of the uh, volute. After that, you define how this uh, pyrrole area would look like and how fast the uh, surface area would go up. Uh, after that, you'll define a discharge diffuser. Uh, usually at the end, they're going to get connected to a pipe or something. So you need to define the amateur lens for doing that. And usually there is an overlap when you create the CAD uh, because it's a full circle and then at the end it has that diffuser. So you need to do an operation called cut water. So you fix the overlap and you get a clean 3D volume, which is closed and you can use it for uh, things like CFD. Uh, volute in general, what it does, it just decelerates the flow. The flow that gets out of the uh, compressor is higher velocity, so it decelerates it and then it feeds it into the pipe or any other device which is going to use it. Uh, after, after creating that, we add uh, stators and also a volute, as I mentioned, uh, to our whole 
assembly that we have. And then we see the 3D CAD associated with it. And now I try to do it with the tool so you can see how it works. Here's the CAD we'll be having at the end. I just close it and start from scratch so you can see better. I choose compressor. After defining the flow rate and also the pressure ratio that you're gonna be getting, you see these are typical values that you see in industry. You see the RPM is quite high. 120,000 RPM, which is very uh, fast. It says that you're going to be putting, you're going to be located in a, a mixed area. So not fully radial, not fully actual, something has been in between. And I choose air to be the Floyd. This is the core diagram. And then after that, just choose OK. Uh, you click on the radial or mixed flow impeller based on the explanation I just provided. Uh, you have uh, the main blades and you have the splitted blades, which are like the, some of the blades are full and some are like cut in half. These are for hydrodynamic reasons. And then you define like a straight number usually for tolerance, which is quite small. And after that, you go to the, you see all these parameters. Then you go to the parameter tab. As I mentioned in the previous section, you need to define the work coefficient, but uh, this is something we have no idea about it. So there's a lot of empirical data inside the tool that can tell you how much it should be. As you see, this is the right location for it. And then if you change it a little bit, it can tell you how much it would be affected. Uh, and then also you need to define a, a efficiency. So we put something like 89%, which is a good value and it's the default value in the tool. Then you go to the dimensions. Uh, here you have, let's say, allowable stress is 15, and then the hydraulic diameter is nine. I think it should be a little longer based on the experience. You can choose anything you want, but if you don't know anything about it, just tool also provide you some estimation. And here to make sure that this extra hydraulic diameter you provided doesn't create too much stress, we just uh, put a more, uh, put a stronger material. Uh, like the allowable stress was increased from 15 to 25. So if you're not worried about the centrifugal force and the stress associated with that. I think we should be good. Uh, so after that, we go to the next tab. This is the meridional contour. You see, you can play around with it. This is where the main blade starts. I want to put it a little further down. And this is where the split blade, as I mentioned, it's a blade which is cut in half. Usually they have it in all the compressors. You can make it here, quite straightforward. And then after that, you want to put a uh, here is the 3D diagram of that. Here is the hub or shroud that you need to have. So here we put I think it's good. Let's put a round number here. Five. Make it a little longer. And we make it like a smooth profile. This is a typical shape you do in a compressor, as you see. We can see everything. This is the flow path. It comes in from top and then goes out radially. 
Uh, I think we should be good. Now we can even probably see a 3D geometry as you see here, but we are gonna go to the plate design. Uh, for this case, you said a uh, number of plates that you're interested, how many main, how many splits. So we say, okay, let's do, for example, 14. You have seven main blades and seven split plates. And we choose six for the number of spans. Usually for uh, compressors, they use the root uh, surface 3D because they're made by machining. And I think everything else looks good. You don't need to touch anything. Most of the values have been populated based on the uh, empirical data, which are quite accurate. So I think we should be good. Uh, we go to next step, which is uh, defining the blade mean lines. You see here, we have the blades here. As I mentioned, some blades are all the way to the top. Some blades are like halfway. So these are the split blades. These are the main blades. And then this is the blade mean line that you can play around with it until you get the curve you're interested in. You see on the fly when I change it, the blade shape changes. You can even see more plots. This is the type of blade we are dealing with, how it's the top view and this is the 3D view. Okay, I think we're good. The next step would be blade profiles. Uh, you can have different profiles for it. You can have anything let's say different thicknesses, even you can bring like a external profile, which is totally doable. But here for just simplicity, we assume it's gonna be something constant thickness, not a lot of change. You have until the same thing on the split blade. So we just keep it as it is, but feel free to change it if you want. Leading edge, trailing edge, we keep it elliptical, splitter edge, elliptical. And I think we have finished everything. We should be good to go regarding the compressor. You see, you have a radial compressor here. Now we gotta add some more stuff to it. Uh, so one thing which is gonna be added to that is just We need to add a new stator as soon as the flow gets out of it. So here we have a stator. It's a radial diffuser. Let's just put a round number here just for the sake of it. It just decelerates the flow a little bit because it's a bigger surface area. And then after that, you go to the meridian plot. And I think you don't need to do anything else. Just click OK, because it's just a pipe, I would say. After that, we need to add a volute. Volute is very simple. It's uh, some kind of snail shell. A structure that uh, decelerates the flow because the surface area goes higher and then the speed kind of goes down. That's very uh, simple and a smooth profile. It should have very low pressure drop, uh, but that, these are the basic concepts of it. So to start designing it, again, similarly, we go look at the uh, workflow that is available for them. We just go step by step until it's finished. First, I think the basics are done here. You just don't need to change anything. You go to next step. Next step is defining the cross section of the volute. So you see on one side, it's a circle. On the other side, you can make rectangle. Let's say radius, any shape you want. It's all in your hand. Uh, so, and then after that, I think we are done with this. We need to define the Next up, to which is the spiral area, how fast area goes up as you see, it's like a snail shell, as I mentioned. So you see that it's just 360 degrees. It has, uh, it's a uh, velocity based. 
and then that's how the surface area go area goes up. You can change it. You can make it uh, kind of um, become bigger in surface area, faster or slower. It's all in your hand, and they have different methods, but they're quite similar. The next step is the discharge diffuser. Now that you have the value, that then you want to connect it to a different part. So you need to have a certain ID and certain less. Let's, let's say for packaging, I said I want to have it 100 millimeter, and let's say if, to make it straight 60. Uh, that's what you put there. You can let it go out tangentially or radially, as you see here, or even put a, a spline uh, so you can tweak it until it fits your tight location, let's say in a car, under hood, or anywhere it is. And even you can put a different angle in Z direction to it. Let's say, just look at the 3D view, it would be obvious. Look at the Z bend. If I do that, it kind of bends even downward too. So you can do that as well. I think we are good. There are only one more step left. Uh, if you see here at the beginning of the volute and when it gets out in the discharge diffuser, there's an overlap, which is not acceptable. We gotta fix it. We gotta separate these two and make like a clean, nice volume out of it. This is something called cut water. If you click on the last tab, that's the last thing you gotta do. Uh, you see here, so you just go there and you can have a simple cut water. It's a little more convoluted and then fillet. Fillet is simpler, I would say, and sharp is too sharp. I wouldn't recommend it, but fillet and simple. 80, 90% of the cases, fillet also works, but simple always works. So if you have complicated geometry, definitely stay with simple. I think we should be good. There's nothing else left of your done. I think we just uh, finished most of it. We just need to connect the impeller uh, to the diffuser because there was a little gap between them. So if you go to the CFD setup, just say on the outlet, make it clo uh, like a closed volume, connect it to the next part, simply it's done. And then on the other side, you need to have another stator, like an inlet pipe. I'll go here. It's like an axial diffuser, simply. And then you go Okay, it's here, you make it, let's say, 100. 100, that's the length of the pipe, the inlet pipe, and I think you should be good to go. Uh, click, there's no blades, simple. Okay, so you have one. So it's good. If you look at the 3D view, Okay, this is funny, we gotta get rid of this shaft here. So I'll tell you how to do that. So if you go here, if you go to the sides first on the inlet, you can make this zero so it kind of gets a little sharp. So it's now sharp, now I gotta totally get rid of it. So this is very easy. This is the meridian or the side kind of view. So you add one more point to it. Okay, so I cut it. I bring it all the way down to here. I think it should come further down. I think it should be good. So if you see here, we got rid of it. So this is the 3D cat. Inlet pipe, diffuser. 
uh, compressor, diffuser, volute, and outlet pipe. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any more questions, feel free to let us know. I'll be happy to answer to you guys. Have a great rest of the day. Bye.